How many of you have ever seen the YouTube uh, channel called Man in America, the YouTube channel? President Trump used to tweet this all the time. He used to tweet this man's videos before President Trump got banned from Jack Dorsey's communist-controlled Twitter. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand to your feet and greet the founder of the Man in America YouTube channel, Seth Ho House. Thank you, Clay. What a crowd. Wow. How's everyone doing today? How many of you are here afraid of COVID, afraid of all that nonsense? Or how many of you have no fear at all because we are free Americans? I know I am. So tell me, what's on your mind? Is it the jabs, the mask mandates, maybe the audit that's happening right now in Arizona, revealing? Is it the border, the criminals in the White House? We've all got a lot on our minds these days, don't we? Perhaps you're here today because you're worried about your job, you're worried about your family, your future, your children's future. Maybe you're here because you need a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of hope. Perhaps you're just scratching your head wondering, how the heck did we get here? Maybe you're looking back two years ago and thinking, how did we get to where we are right now? Because we've come a long way from where we started, haven't we? And when we look back, and we look back through the 90s, the 80s, the 70s, 60s, 50s, things seem so much more simple, so peaceful, so normal. Because come to think about it, when was the last time things actually were normal? I mean, over the last year, we've realized that we're living under a fake government made up of fake political parties, fake politicians with fake promises. We've got fake currency, fake news, fake education, a fake justice system, fake fact checkers, fake medicine, a fake pandemic, fake heroes, and even entire generations fighting against fake problems. Heck, we've even got fake women and fake men these days. Do we really want to go to back to that so-called normal? I sure don't. But which normal would we go back to if we had the choice? I used to think things were pretty good back in the 80s and 90s when I grew up. My mom says the 70s were great. Other folks assure me it was the 50s. And more recently, though, people are saying we have to go all the way back to 1776. But what does that mean? When I was 10 years old, I wanted an ACDC cassette tape so bad, but there was no way on earth my mom was gonna buy me a cassette tape with a song called Highway to Hell. <laughs> I begged her, Mom, please, it's not that bad. But in her eyes, it was. She thought that music was the work of the devil. But when her parents told her the same thing about Led Zeppelin in the 60s and 70s, now, that was too, going too far for her. And these days, we've got rappers like Lil Nas who literally put human blood into 666 pairs of Nike shoes and have a music video where he's pole dancing with Satan in hell. But if we talk to all his millions of 12 to 13 year old followers and ask them if they thought that was the work of the devil, let me guess, they'd say, it's not that bad. How does that old saying go? The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing us he didn't exist. But it's not that bad, we told ourselves, each step of the way. We're making love, not war. It's not that bad to have a little fun before the ball of chain of marriage. It's not that bad to spend Monday nights watching football instead of going to the local school board meeting. It's not that bad to let your kid watch an R-rated movie. All their friends watched it. It's not that bad to give up a little bit of our freedoms to protect us from terrorists post 9-11. It's not that bad to stop saying Merry Christmas or talking about God in case we offend someone. It's not that bad for our kids to explore their sexuality. It's not that bad to send our jobs and manufacturing to China. It's not that bad to wash your hands. It's not that bad to wear a mask. It's not that bad to get the jab. It's not that bad to take a bite of this delicious apple. It's not that bad. But think about it, if it wasn't that bad, then how do we go from Michelangelo's creation of Adam to the abomination of artwork called Piss Christ? How do we go from Mozart to Madonna, 
from Little House on the Prairie to Keeping Up with the Kardashians? How do we get from Boy Scouts to Drag Queen Story Hour? How do we go from freedom to forced vaccination? How do we go from George Washington to Joe Biden? Step by step by step. And there's a name for this long, drawn-out process of cultural disintegration. Perhaps you've heard about it. It's called cultural Marxism. And it's what the communists came up with when they realized that they couldn't break America in a kinetic war. So instead, they decided to break our souls and how they do it, step by step by step, through a series of small yeses, a series of small it's not that bads. But make no mistake, all of it was by design. Our movies, our songs, our heroes, even our fundamental ideas that we were taught. So many things over the past hundred years were stepping stones deliberately placed on the road to exactly where we are right now. So I ask you, was it really not that bad? A while back, I heard that an LGBTQ group was upset because another group had added a P to the end of, the, to the end of their ever-expanding acronym. You know what that P stood for? Pedophilia. You see, that LGBT group was fine about everything up until that point, bondage, orgies, etc., but they drew the line at pedophilia. My grandpa drew the line at meeting my mom go on a date before she was 16. For my daughter, we'll probably be 27. But the point is, is that we all have our own lines, don't we? But once upon a time, we knew these lines couldn't be drawn by man. We knew the lines were drawn by God. Because otherwise, how do we decide which lines we're going to follow? <laughs> and the lines drawn by God, they weren't there to so-called oppress us. They were there to protect us. Because who was waiting on the other side? When Texas recently passed its Heartbeat Act, banning abortion once a fetal heartbeat is detected, which is amazing. <laughs> Do you know who the strongest opponent was? The Satanic Temple. And you know what their complaint was? They claimed the act was in violation of their constitutional rights. They claimed that it was their religious freedom to have Satanic abortion rituals. You heard me. Satanic abortion rituals. And what the feminists and the leftists have to say about that, these folks who hate religion and who told us for decades that abortion was all about women's rights, nothing else, they said nothing. Of course. Why? Because Satanism and communism aren't just ideological allies. They are branches of the same tree. Do you know that Karl Marx himself was once a devout Christian? But over the course of his life, he turned his soul over to Satan and vowed revenge against God. In his poem, The Fiddler, he wrote, How so I plunge, plunge without fail my blood black saber into your soul till hearts bewitched, till sense is real. With Satan I have struck my deal. That's right. Marx struck a deal with Satan. From its inception, communism has been rooted in evil, Satan's own political branch. And even though it's only just baring its teeth in the U.S. now, this specter has been ruling our world and our government for a very long time. Think about it. If the government has the power to lock down the entire country, why can't they lock down child sex trafficking? If they can have tech companies censor the entire internet to stop us talking about vaccines or election fraud, why can't they stop our children from finding pornography? I mean, come on. Our churches are closed, yet our strip clubs are open. You can't run your business, but you can go to a casino. And you can't hug grandma, but you can kill your unborn child at taxpayer expense. Could it be any more obvious that this is a battle of good and evil? How does a teacher go from caring for our children to gagging them eight hours a day? How does a doctor go from swearing an earth to do no harm to forcing experimental drugs? It doesn't happen overnight. It happens step by step by step. There's an old Chinese communist song that goes, the old society turns humans into ghosts. The new society turns ghosts into humans meaning that communism robs people of their humanity, rendering them no better than demons and ghosts. And isn't that what we're seeing right now all around us? 
Because what happens when a nation rewrites the laws ordained by heaven? What happens when a nation turns its back on God? Does man still deserve freedom then? Doesn't it make sense that tyranny will follow? Our second president, John Adams, said, quote, Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. James Madison wrote that our Constitution requires, quote, sufficient virtue among men for self-government. Otherwise, nothing less than the chains of despotism can restrain them from destroying and devouring one another, end quote. Because how can our Constitution, written to protect the sacred rights of virtuous, God-fearing people, become a haven for Satanists and Marxists to murder the unborn? How can we let our First Amendment, which enshrined into law our right to speak freely, become the muzzle that silences us in the face of evil? If our nation is a garden, then right now it's full of weeds. And if they, and they all took root in the it's not that bads. So even if Trump does come galloping back on, in a, on a white horse and banishes Biden from the Oval Office and scraps all of his mandates, won't those cockroaches just scurry back into the shadows only to creep back in again later on? How can we, the people, ensure that America is able to endure? This is the question we have to ask ourselves right now. So I've been asking myself, what does it mean to go back to 1776? Is it about going back to horses and carts and pitchforks and mus muskets? Or is it about going back to the values and morals of our forefathers that were grounded in the laws of heaven itself? <laughs> what were people like back in 1776? What was George Washington like? Was he yearning for the war to end so he could enjoy his summer vacation? Was he posting on Facebook telling the British to go F themselves? Was he mouthing off in frustration because the war has taken too long? Was he telling his exhausted men with frozen and bloodied feet that everything was hopeless, they should just give up? Was he watching from the sidelines, enjoying the show, waiting for someone else to come save him? Or did he take full responsibility and fight all the way to the end against all odds, placing every ounce of his faith in Almighty God and pledging his life, his fortune, and his sacred honor to banish evil within and without and secure freedom and justice for all? Because if that's not what we're doing here today, if that's not what we're fighting for, and if we just want to get back to our normal, to our football games and vacations and our bread and circuses, then how can we expect divine providence to shine down upon us again at this historical moment? Because that's what we're going to need to get through this. America is not too big to fall, just like Rome wasn't too big to fall. In fact, America is falling faster than we ever could have imagined. This experiment in self-government veered off track a long time ago, and no mortal man can steer it back with his hands alone. This includes President Trump. In his inaugural address to the nation, George Washington described how every step towards America's independence was guided by divine providence. He said, quote, the propitious smiles of heaven can never be expected on a nation that disregards the eternal rules of order and right which heaven itself has ordained, end quote. We're all here today because we're trying to save our nation. That's why we're here. But our nation will only be saved if God deems it a nation worth saving. And if he doesn't, it'll fall into the grips of evil for a thousand years, if it ever comes back. But to achieve that, I believe that all of us, individually and as a whole, need to do some deep soul searching and go through a very fundamental reawakening to figure out how we got here. But what truly gives me hope, because I do have a lot of hope, <laughs> if you know who I am, because is that I believe that we are. Isn't this the Reawaken America tour that we're on right now? Our forefathers knew that man was imperfect, that man had capacity for both good and evil, and that tyranny was lurking at every turn. Our forefathers knew the price of liberty was eternal vigilance, not just with the evil outside, but also with the evil within. 
because this nation didn't come about through just winning a war, fought with guns and pitchforks. This nation was born in the hearts and minds of virtuous, courageous people who followed heaven's will, who were capable of self-governance, who fearlessly stood up to evil, and who were carried to victory by divine providence. So it is my hope that as we rise again now, just like our forefathers did in 1776, that God will shower us once again with the blessings of his divine providence, give us the wisdom and fortitude, and cover us through this battle for our freedom, for our country, and for our souls. May God bless us all, and may God bless America.